In other words, the subject experienced between 2 to 10 times more strength gains in just over half the time, simply by being misled into thinking they were on. In this video, I'm not actually going to examine the scientific research directly exploring if turkesterone works. Instead, I want to bring the viewer's attention to the extremely interesting science on why something works even if it doesn't. First things first, if you're actually interested in the current research on turkesterone's effects on hypertrophy and strength, I'll leave a link to an excellent discussion between Jeff Nippard and Dr. Eric Trexler discussing all you need to know in the description. My summary is there simply is weak and limited evidence currently exploring the effectiveness of turkesterone. Matter of fact, there is not actually a single long-term study in humans examining how turkesterone precisely impacts hypertrophy and strength. The most commonly referenced human research has merely examined structurally similar compounds to turkesterone, but not precisely turkesterone. Now, some of you may be thinking sure, the scientific evidence currently fails to provide compelling evidence on turkesterone's effectiveness. But there are tons and tons of individuals out there claiming to have experienced greater hypertrophy and strength gains thanks to turkesterone. From Reddit, to YouTube comment sections, and even from the review section of your favourite doctor's website. Surely this is good enough? Probably not. The problem with relying on individuals' experiences is there could potentially be an array of confounding factors. Upon taking turkesterone, might the individual have unconsciously or even consciously altered other variables? Might they have started training with more effort, altering their nutrition, sleeping more? Or might the placebo effect just have taken place? That is, they believed they were going to see an effect, so they did. Well-designed scientific studies enable us to control these variables to degrees simply not possible when combining numerous experiences from individuals. In this video, I wanted to zone in on the placebo effect, as I truly believe this effect should not be underestimated. Now, I want to make it clear that by no means am I definitively saying turkesterone is all placebo. It's completely possible future data could very well come out and validate the claims many have been making surrounding turkesterone. However, at this time at least, I believe the power of the placebo effect should be considered. Imagine you're researching turkesterone, reading the numerous anecdotal accounts you run across. You come across individuals claiming to have put on X and Y amounts of lean body mass and strength. Some individuals even claim they are as potent as anabolic steroids. This all excites you. You start believing that if you too take turkesterone, freakish gains are possible. When your fresh new bottle of turkesterone arrives, you expect your gains to supersede what you've experienced before. How much do these expectations, and these expectations alone, influence the gains you experience? Based on two fascinating studies, I'd argue a lot more than people would think. Let's dive in and explore the data. Let us travel back to 1973, where two researchers by the name of Ariel and Saville aim to answer the question, just how much of the effects of anabolic steroids are a result of the placebo effect? 15 male varsity athletes, with at least two years of weight training experience, first trained for seven weeks. During this period, those that made the largest gains in one rep max strength on the bench press, seated press, standing press, and squat would be rewarded with free access to steroids to use during a subsequent four-week training period. As the researchers promised, six subjects, of the initial 15, were selected to train for a further four weeks, while given a 10 mg pill of Dianabol, an anabolic steroid, to take daily. However, the subjects were unaware that this was a complete sham. The pill they took was a placebo pill. It was not actually dianable. The results were truly surprising. After the initial seven training weeks, where the six subjects were not taking any placebo pill, their one rep maxes increased by an average of 4.35 kilograms for the bench press, 0.73 kilograms for the standing press, 2.27 kilograms for the seated press, and 2.65 kilograms for the squat. But after the four weeks in which the subjects took the daily placebo pills, their one rep maxes increased by an average of 13.28 kilograms on the bench press, 7.58 kilograms on the standing press, 5.3 kilograms on the seated press, and 18.94 kilograms on the squat. 
In other words, the subject experienced between 2 to 10 times more strength gains in just over half the time, simply by being misled into thinking they were on anabolic steroids, even though they were merely consuming placebo pills. Another study by Maganaris and colleagues, conducted in 2000, provides us with no less of a surprising insight into the power of the placebo. The lead author of the study was a powerlifting coach. Previously, his athletes, precisely 11 nationally ranked powerlifters, had asked the coach about the effectiveness of anabolic steroids, which inspired the coach to conduct this study. First, the researchers assessed the subject's baseline one rep maxes on the bench press, squat and deadlift. Note, their average one rep maxes were 189 kilograms for the bench press, 257 kilograms for the squat, and 260 kilograms for the deadlift, so they were pretty damn strong. In the first experimental session, five minutes before testing one rep max on the bench press, squat, and deadlift, the subjects were given two tablets and told they were immediate acting anabolic steroids. However, this was a sham. The pills were simply placebo. More precisely, they simply contained saccharin. After taking these two pills, all subjects hit personal records. The subjects one rep maxes were an average 9.5 kilograms higher on the bench press, 12.2 kilograms higher on the squat, and 10.9 kilograms higher on the deadlift versus baseline. Fascinatingly, the authors noted these performance increases represented a change from being nationally ranked to being internationally ranked for all subjects. Put another way, simply thinking they took immediate acting anabolic steroids instantly elevated the subject's strength abilities to seriously impressive levels. After this first experimental session, all subjects were provided with two more placebo pills to use during their upcoming training week. During this week, all subjects reported increased vigour and that they were lifting heavier loads or performing more repetitions than ever before. In the second experimental session, after the week of training, one rep max on the bench press, squat and deadlift was measured yet again. However, before the one rep max test, some subjects were actually told the pills they took were merely a placebo. These subjects, compared to the first experimental session, lifted 7.5 kilograms less on the bench press, 11 kilograms less on the squat, and 12.5 kilograms less on the deadlift. In other words, Despite them performing better than ever before in the first experimental session and the training week, the simple revelation they had only been consuming a placebo all along plummeted their strength back down to near baseline. The other subjects who remained unaware the pills they were taking were placebos did not really make any further gains on average, but roughly maintained the impressive gains they experienced compared to the baseline values. In my eyes, the results of these two studies are truly astonishing and depict the sheer potential power of the placebo. As a brief interlude, it's worth noting that the only reason I'm aware of these data is that Greg Knuckles of Stronger by Science, who I'm not in any way affiliated to, detailed these two studies in an awesome article on the science of steroids a few years back. I'll leave a link to that article in the description. Returning on topic, I think the two studies underscore that with any given supplement, even anabolic steroids, if you have an expectation it will work profoundly, it's more than likely at least some degree of the gains you experience can be attributed towards this mere expectation. Now, by no stretch of the imagination am I saying that anabolic steroids are all placebo. It's well established that anabolic steroids mechanistically work. For example, Basin and colleagues established that after 10 weeks, merely injecting 600 mg of testosterone weekly without lifting weights, produced larger quadriceps area, triceps area, and fat-free mass gains compared to lifting weights naturally. What I am saying though, is it probably is more than likely some degree of gains experienced with anabolic steroids can be attributed to the mere expectations of the user. Moreover, when discussing supplements that simply do not currently have long-term human data supporting their effectiveness, and we have numerous anecdotes announcing their effectiveness, it's truly difficult to ascertain how much of this is attributed to the placebo effect. It might just very well be most of it. Finally, and separate from discussing supplements, I think these two studies provide insight into just how much our expectations might influence outcomes with anything. How much might an individual be restricting their potential based on their expectations? 
perhaps we're all capable of a lot more than we think in any realm. If we could detach from our current expectations and adapt to expectations beyond what we previously perceived to be possible, we might just experience what we thought we never could.